Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to this week's episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. And on this week, we're going to talk a little bit about my experience with cold water training. Now, when I turned 40 years old, um, I was trying to go on a retreat in Poland with the Iceman Wim Hof. And if you've not looked up Wim Hof before, I'm going to include a link down below of his special that Vice News did on him a few years ago that really helped get him popular. Um, I've heard about Wim Hof on different podcasts, and he has done feats such as uh, running a marathon um, around Mount Everest and just uh, barefoot with shorts on. Um, he's, he's been submerged in ice longer than anyone else, I think, according to the Guinness World Book of Records, and he's done just a lot of uh, really unique things with breath work and cold water exposure, right? So for every year, I try to do something different, like one year... Uh, I wanted to run a marathon. One year I wanted to hunt a deer. Uh, one year I wanted to train with Wim Hof. And um, on my year, the year I turned 40, the Wim Hof experience had been sold out. So I had to plan that for another time. So I looked up uh, Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese's training company called XPT, Extreme Performance Training. And they did different workshops in Malibu and Hawaii. And I signed up for that May to go to Malibu to their home to train. Uh, some of the stuff they do during their training is exposure to the cold, exposure to the heat through a sauna, and they do a lot of breath work exercises and training, nutrition training, and they also do pool workouts to where um, you might doing, be doing uh, snatches and squat thrusts underneath the water in a pool uh, to help you get stronger and, and build resiliency and whatnot. So went out there, trained with them, and you know I've been taking cold showers for a while. But it was my first time being immersed in the ice. And uh, once I got in the ice, I really went into shock. And thankfully, I had a coach there to help me breathe through that two minutes. But from that two minutes, I then got into the sauna and warmed up, and we cycled back and forth again. So after this three-day experience with Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese at their home, um, I went back and bought a chest freezer to put in my garage in D.C. So you might be asking, like, all right, you did this cold water training. Like, what are the benefits of it? Well, one thing I need to say is I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. You need to talk to your own practitioner before you do this because some of this does have health implications. But there are big-time benefits to cold water exposure. Uh, And I'm going to name six of them right now. If you want more information, uh, there's information online. Dr. Andrew Huberman has a podcast he does on cold, and I'll link to that below as well. But these are the benefits I get out of it and why I keep coming back. The first is you decrease inflammation, right? I'm not playing basketball right now, but I'm lifting a lot of weights and I'm not always eating the healthiest, but submersing yourself in cold water, whether it's in a mountain creek like I do, whether it's in a cold plunge, which is some commercial product you can buy, or whether it's in a bathtub or horse tank filled with ice, that is going to help with your body's inflammation, okay? And help bring it down. Just like you put ice on a busted ankle, this is kind of like icing your entire body. Second, it improves your mood. When you get in, you will have an increase of adrenaline and dopamine, and you will feel elated once you get out with this dump of hormones, and it will last you up to six hours. So one of the benefits is that people that might be experiencing depression or anxiety, if they do this, they'll feel a lot of physiological relief. So you know, instead of maybe getting on an SSRI or other antidepressant medicine, into a workout routine, try some cold therapy, try a sauna, see if that helps regulate your biochemicals uh, even better. Once again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying you should do this. It's something to look into. Number three, it boosts your immunity, right? Helps with uh, your white blood cells and some other aspects, which you need to <laughs> talk to someone else about more of the details on that. It does boost your immunity, helps increase your metabolism. So if you're looking to lose weight and burn fat, Absolutely does that because your body's got to spend a lot of energy to warm back up. You get better sleep and it builds re- builds resilience and grit. Like when you get out of the cold, you feel tougher, you feel more disciplined and you can handle other challenges in your life because you know you can handle getting into ice cold conditions 
some other parts in life will not be that hard to do, right? One of the things I like to do when I take people uh, to do their first ice dips is the first time we do it, I walk them through it and, and mention that when they get in, their body's going to go into a fight or flight state. It's going to not feel good. Your body's going to panic and think you're dying. And it's going to tell every cell in your body to get out of there. That'll last about 10 to 20 seconds. And when someone gets in for the first time, you know, the water above their heart, you can see them kind of, their look in their eye where they've got panic. And then through deep, slow breathing down into your diaphragm, you can see them come out of fight or flight to the, where they realize they're not going to die in this condition. This condition of ice cold water, it actually kind of feels good. And then they're settled in. Once they settle in, I make sure they take five deep breaths. And if they feel great, they can stay in. If they want to get out, they get out. And that's their first time in the water. Next time they come in, they can try to do it for longer if they want to. But the first time is just about getting used to the shock, getting your breath under control, doing five breaths, then getting out. Um, so that's what I do with a lot of beginners um, that I've introduced this to. So I told you how I did it for the first time with Laird Hamilton. I got my own chest freezer in D.C. when I lived there, um, put it on two hours a night, and it got down to about 36 degrees. I did that quite a bit. And then um, finally, a few years ago, in February 2020, right before COVID hit, I did sign up for the Wim Hof retreat in Poland and flew over there to do five days in the mountains of Poland in February. So when I got there, I was with a group of 99 other people, and they split us into four groups of 25. And immediately, uh, we've all been to basketball camps where you kind of bond with your team over the week. Uh, everyone in our group bonded within a couple, a couple hours of knowing each other. We were all there for the right reasons, all wanted to learn more about the breath work that Wim Hof talks about, about you know how much can we push ourselves in the cold. And uh, we had great instructors. In fact, one of my instructors, Neil, uh, was a pro European basketball player who now is into the breath work uh, and does that full time. So really good talking to them. But a couple of highlights of training here was that, you know, we did a lot of breath work. Um, you learn how to do breath holds. There's a lot of benefits that come from this. Uh, you can help alkalize your alkaline, make your blood more alkaline positive. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Might be speaking wrong on that. Helps with immunity, helps with your mood, helps with your resiliency. Uh, so there's a lot that goes on with the breath. I'm not really going to touch on that too much. I'm going to go back to the ice. Uh, our first day there, the group got in the water for a couple minutes just to go through fight or flight, figure it out. And when you do breath work, you actually become more resilient to the cold water too. So they kind of go hand in hand. But we did that. And then the next day we did five minutes in the water, which is longer than I normally do. We're talking about water here. The timing is you want to at least get two minutes in. If you get three minutes in, you're getting all the benefits, right? And if you go more than three minutes, you'll burn more, burn more calories. But three minutes is what you want to aim for. That's where you get all the hormone releasing. The inflammation uh, uh, you know, gets, gets, gets lowered um, and your immunity gets boosted. So three minutes is kind of the magic number. But in Poland, we were trying to push it and see how far we could go. So we did five minutes, right? And we all kicked butt doing that as a group. Um, the key is that we learned over there in Poland is when you get in that cold water, you got a tendency to tense up and try to fight it when the better way to do it is on your exhales, try to relax your shoulders, relax into nature, and just accept it. And that way, it's actually, it's actually easier than trying to fight it and tense up. So release yourself, be one with nature, and I found that as a good kind of tip on, on being able to handle the cold. Well, our graduation for the cold weather was to, um, we woke up one morning, I think it was Thursday, and uh, did a big breathing session, had a big breakfast, and then we were going to do 10 minutes in the water. Now, anyone that's been in for two minutes knows how long that can feel. Even for us that were ex you know, trained and experienced in the ice, had never done 10 minutes before. And this is the mountains of Poland in February. We're talking snow melt right here, Okay. And it's one of the hardest things I've done in my life. My emotions went up and down from I've got this to my body hurts to I don't got this. I don't know how I'm going to make it to panic back to calmness. So I went through a sine wave of different emotions. Everyone else you could see in the group was feeling it too. Some were locked in with their eyes closed, breathing slowly. Others had a panic looked in their eye. Uh, I went through a whole plethora of emotions and, uh, 
and Wim Hof was there chanting next to us as the 25 of us in this water. And, um, it, 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 it really jarred something loose in a positive way because now I know I can do 10 minutes, right. In those kind of conditions. Um, but we had people get out. We had a real slight girl with us, real skinny and small. She really ne- took her a long time to warm up. The biggest guy in our group, big Danish guy, he, it took him a while to get warmed up. We all went in a sauna. We're shivering for hours afterwards trying to get our core temperature back up. But we all got out of there with kind of a, um, kind of a new confidence that we could do something like that, right? So we were pre- f- high, flying pretty high knowing that we could push ourselves to those limits. And mind you, you're sitting there passively for 10 minutes. It's not like you're doing anything, but with your body going through all those physiological changes, it really it really did a number on your mind, but really, really proud that I was able to get through it. And the next day, the other graduation was we walked um, up a mountain. And uh, the first half, we walked up with clothes on, and then we got halfway. We took off to where we're just in shorts, boots, no shirt, and a hat, uh, and sunglasses. So... 17 degrees out, sunny, and I'm skinny. I get cold easily, but we've done so much breath work, so much relaxing that the six mile hike up the mountain and just, you know, snow all around us and 17 degrees with just shorts on and a hat, um, slowing down the breath, relaxing the shoulders and the exhale, just keeping breath in through the nose, you know, out through the mouth, nice and slow, keeping calm. And I went up the whole way without shivering. And uh, if you watch that Vice video on Iceman, you'll see that they did this in more blizzard conditions, which would be a lot tougher. But once again, you get to the top of the mountain. They had a lodge up there. We all celebrated um, because we did it, right? So um, really, really enjoyed um, my experiences with Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese, getting introduced to the ice, then going to Poland and, uh, and doing it with the master, you know, Wim Hof. And hearing him talk about you know his experiences and, and how cold can really help people, and the reason I want to share it today is just it's starting to get more into the mainstream now. Like you see the cold plunge out there in a lot of ads being advertised. I think it's about five thousand dollars to where you can bring this bathtub into your house and it filters, it keeps it cold, and you can get all these benefits on a daily basis. And if I had my druthers, you know, I would wake up first thing in the morning, go dip in a creek or dip in a cold plunge. And just ride that high the rest of the day to where your metabolism's cranking. You've got that dopamine uh, flowing through uh, your blood. You got the adrenaline going. You're just you've got that grit already under the way. So the rest of the day is probably not going to be as challenging. And you just you know here we live in Colorado. I'm 18 minutes away from a creek, from a beautiful clear creek with beautiful pools in it. So it's something to think about if you don't have access to a cold water creek or river, you can always take your bathtub, fill it up with ice from a corner store or supermarket, and submerge in there. There are plenty of videos out there um, to get help on how to do this. There's plenty of articles telling the benefits to give you more detail than when I gave you. But if I was an athlete right now, I would incorporate a lot of ice for the inflammation purposes, you know, for the immunity to make sure you stay healthy throughout a season, to feel good when things get anxious, which a lot of my athletes are feeling right now with college placement, prep school placement, et cetera. I think there's a lot that can come from this. So once again, not a doctor, not giving medical advice here. Make sure you're healthy enough to do this. I just think it's one of the best things I've incorporated into my life. And I'm really grateful for, you know, Laird Hamilton, Gabby Reese, um, Andrew Huberman, Wim Hof, these people sharing this with the public because I've read about it, learned about it. And just think it's really neat. And I've gone dipping with coaches like Coach Alex Pope of IMG and I have gone dipping. Raphael Chilius has videos on Instagram of him getting an ice. Um, Carl from D3 Direct, he's come out here and, uh, and we've done it before. So it's kind of a, a brotherhood thing too. You bond with people doing it and um, it's just something to think about. So if you guys got any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me. It's something I'm passionate about. I know how good it feels when you do it. And um, yeah, that's today's mini episode. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great day and we'll get back to um, other interviews in the future. Take care.